All right. Good morning, yogis. Good morning. Thanks for joining me again for this online practice. So the last few months, we've been exploring the eight limb path of Patanjali. And so now we're on the physical postures, which most people associate yoga with the asana and the pranayama. So just to remember, you know, asana means comfortable seat. So find the variation in the practice that suits you. You know, if, for example, if you don't want to have your head too far below your heart, you know, don't, you know, make that adjustment. Um, if you don't want to go, you know, so deep into a pose, just really honor your body so that you leave the class feeling ease in your body, you know, rejuvenated, you know, rested, and a sense of joy, not, uh, not un unable to walk for a few days. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. <laughs> that's what you're after. But uh, the idea is for us to feel really good at the end. All right. And our pranayama will help us with that. So it, it is breath control. And uh, so, and prana means life force. So our breath helps to move that life force around the body. And then that, um, that breath will help control our mind. So in that way, our pranayama can help us to, you know, regulate our mind state. If we're feeling a little, a little tense, I mean, these days it's, you know, it's been a little anxiety producing this whole situation we're in. So you can use your breath to calm yourself down. And uh, we'll try a few different breath techniques today. And um, again, do what feels right for you in the breath. If it makes you feel uncomfortable at any point, then just go back to a regular uh, three-part yogic breath, a circular breath. And we'll um, do a, you know, even some Kambalabhati today. So um, you might wanna have some tissues if you need to, to clear your nostrils. Uh, and uh, let's get started. So let's come to a comfortable seat. I'm gonna come back here. And so a comfortable seat could be in a chair, right? You're ha welcome to sit in a chair or you can sit on a, a little blanket like I am. And then maybe even press your knees forward and then maybe lift your hips a little bit so that you can really maybe move the flesh away and really ground through the sit bones. And then from that point, then lengthen the spine, give a little tone to the belly to sit upright for this free flow of energy and breath. And then you can keep your palms down or up, you can even bring your forefinger, your pointer fingers in and place your thumb on top of it for jhana mudra. And then let's bring our awareness inside and focus on the breath. Dirga breath, that three-part yogic breath. So feel it first in the belly as the belly expands. Feel the breath coming to the middle lungs, like around the rib cage. Feel the breath rising up to the collarbones. You can even give a little pause here and then exhale from the upper lungs, the middle lungs, and the lower belly. So breathe in this way a few rounds. So Dirga breath, often called the three-part yogic breath, and sometimes called the circular breath because there's no beginning and no end. You know, as you're breathing, notice where the inhale becomes the exhale and the exhale becomes the inhale. Right. Maybe even feel that inhale starting at the base of the spine, moving up through the belly, through the torso, up to the crown of the head, and the exhale maybe moving along the back body, along the spine, back to the tailbone, to the ground, and then feel that inhale rising up through the front of the body, 
all the way up through the crown of the head and exhale. So you can maybe visualize this idea of the circular breath. You can continue like that. Or if you'd like, you can layer on top of that, that ocean sounding breath, ujjayi breathing, victorious breath, where we constrict the back of the throat so it makes that audible quality. The breath is a little more measured, starts to bring a little heat to the body, and our awareness can affix to that sound. So it keeps us present here. You know, it's, it's common for our mind to go off to the things that we have to do later, but right now we are here in this moment, connecting with our breath, nothing to do, nowhere to go, just right here in this body, in this space with this breath. Take two more breath cycles like that. And then we're going to move to a little more energizing breaths. We'll add maybe a couple rounds of Kabbalah Bhati uh, interspersed with the Ujjayi, that ocean sounding breath. Now remember, Kabbalah Bhati is where um, this skull is often called skull polishing breath because it helps to elevate our energy. It's achieved by contracting your abdominal muscles, like drawing them in to force the air out and then relaxing so the inhale happens on its own. No control, you're not having to draw it in, ready? So let's try it, maybe just for a round of 10 breaths to practice it. Bring the hand on the belly, inhale here, feel your belly expand, and then exhale, contract, forceful expulsion of air, inhale, release. Contract, release. Contract, release. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then come back to the ujjayi, the ocean sounding breath, for maybe three rounds. Now let's go back to that ujjayi for 20. And if, it's, if you're comfortable with it, you can pick up the pace. Again, remember it's just the contraction and then the relaxation. Go at any pace that feels comfortable for you. And then release, coming back to the ujjayi for another round of three. Let's take one more round here. Kabbalah Bhakti, 10, 20, you can even go 30 depending on the pace. Again, it's up to you. Make it feel good in your body when you're ready. And you don't even have to hold the belly, it's just to help us understand that it's a contraction. Can place your hands back on your lap. Here we go, last round. Return to the Kabbalah, uh, to Ujjayi, that victorious breath for three rounds. Nice. And notice how you're feeling now. Notice there might have been a you know, a slight even burning sensation in the nose because we've kind of cleared the nasal passages. You might have felt some energizing, maybe an uplifting of prana, of energy, which is why it's called skull polishing breath. You could have felt that your abdominals 
were like worked as if you did some crunches um, or something else. I don't know. Just um, we use it as an opportunity to then notice how we're feeling. All right. So now let's come into some physical postures. So uh, you know, let's come to standing. You might want to have your blocks nearby, a chair nearby if you're planning to use a chair as a prop. I'm gonna make sure my phone is on airplane mode. All right. Nice. And then we'll find our uh, Tadasana. So connect your feet to the earth. Maybe your feet are about hips distance apart, so you have a comfortable stance. You can even shift your weight around the feet so that we feel that every part of our feet connects to the mat. We're nice and stable. All right, so now we're going to do um, a series of exercises that's in Kripalu Yoga, we call this Pranapana. So they're basically means warm up. So there, we're going to move our spine in the six basic directions. You know, it, um, I always call it seven because we always want to elongate back bend, forward bend, side bending, and twisting, but with a little bit of breath. So again, do it um, to the degree that feels comfortable for you, you know, the pace that feels comfortable, and to the degree that it feels comfortable for you. So this first one is kind of like a breath of joy. And we will inhale through the nose, and then exhale through the mouth with a ha. So you can make it a sounding. So these are called hara breaths. So they're kind of like that three-part dirga breath. Hara just means it's Japanese for belly. So we're doing these deep belly breathing and it's oxygenating for the body, it's pranifying or energizing for the body. And then we're also moving our body in those various ways to warm up our, our spine and create heat in the body. So the first inhale will be our arms out to the sides, up to the sky, get long, but maybe take a slight extension and only go as far back as feels comfortable for you. And then on the exhale, soften the knees, hinge from your hips and swing forward with a ha out of the mouth. Inhale up, take your extension and elongation, exhale, ha. Inhale, ha. Ha, and then find the pace that feels comfortable for you. Honor the low back, honor the hamstrings. Only get your head as far down in relationship to the heart as feels comfortable for you. If you start to feel dizzy, maybe keep your head at hip height, at heart height. Ha. Four more. Ha. And come to standing. Woo. Notice how you're feeling. Feeling good, right? <sighs> come back to your normal breath and notice. Okay. So, and what we call, you know, empty coat sleeves or empty shirt sleeves. So open up your feet about a little more than hips distance apart. Okay. Give a little tone to the belly. This is going to be a rotation. So just honor, you know, your spine. Only go as far as feels comfortable for you. Support it with a, you know, engaged core. And then, you know, side to side. So you can soften your knees. You can even twist a little bit. And then feel, so we're for, right now we're just doing a regular breath or dear good breath or your ujjayi. And as your arms swing on your body, maybe you can let your elbows bend so the one hand kind of touches like right below your shoulder on your chest and the other hand is going behind the back and maybe hitting the back body. So you can really kind of give yourself little taps here to activate the limbs. And then we're inhaling through the nose and exhaling with a ha, 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 ha. And you can go whatever pace feels comfortable for you. You know, if the tapping doesn't feel comfortable, you don't have to. It's just a, you know, a lot of options. Ha! 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 Ha!
and bring it to stillness and then notice how you're feeling now. Oh yeah, feeling good. You have the blood flowing, sending oxygen to all parts of the body. All right. Now that one last one, we're gonna open up our legs a little bit wider, like almost the width of a full triangle stance because we're gonna do some side bending. Little tone to the belly. And then let your right arm glide down the right leg as the left arm, the elbow bends and the fist comes underneath the armpit, like a little bit of a monkey arm. And then come back up and the other side. And down. Now only go as far over to each side as feels comfortable for you. Ha, ha, ha. Keep the belly tone to support the low back. Once again, protect the back. Ha, 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 ha. Try not to hinge forward. So we're just laterally bending side to side. Ha, 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 ha. Four. Ha, 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 two, and one. And come on back up to standing. You can heel toe your feet back to center and notice how you're feeling now. Good job. All right. Nice. Now we're going to go into a squat. This I know is not always great for people's knees. So you don't have to go too deep into your knee flexion. You can maybe be here and then come to standing. You might go here, stand, you know, here to stand. These are called Hara squats. So um, yeah, and you can even have your hands on the blocks. If I meant to get my blocks out. I just kind of got my blocks out, yep. You can always have your hands on your blocks. So, um, Actually, we'll, we're gonna do a holding before we get there. That's what we'll do. So um, it'll be a nice transition. So you can have your blocks ready. Finger hips distance apart. Give a little tone to the belly. Good. Bring your arms out like a T. And let's hinge from our hips and pause here. So you're making kind of an L with the body. Right, so you're making an L. And then give a little tone to the belly to support the back. Send your hips up to the sky. Keep the knees bent to protect the hamstrings or press them back. Lengthen from tailbone to crown. Activate your arms. Good. You know, you're looking down at the earth, so your neck's in line with your spine. If you need to pulse a little, pulsations help with the holding, right? It's, it's okay. You know, you can just pulse a little bit so you can come in and out of it as we build strength, as we build stamina and resiliency. Your strong breath. Maybe do another round of circular breath up through the, the feet, the legs, through the front of the body to the crown of the head, out through the back of the, the skull, along the spine, down the back of the legs to the earth. Inhale up the front of the body to the crown of the head. Exhale down the back of the body to the earth. And, keep, and, and really see if you can stay with this pose. Rather than kind of shrinking out of it going, oh my gosh, I can't hold it anymore, go into it with more vigor. Strong legs, strong belly, strong arms. Oh, breathe here. Couple more breaths. In Kripala Yoga, we do a lot of holdings for periods of time where we can watch the energy build, watch what happens in the mind. A lot of times it squawks, doesn't want to stay with it. We cultivate discipline, resiliency, kind of what we're practicing right now in our lives, right? <laughs> cultivating our discipline, our resiliency. And then, you know, before you know it, you can, you can go into it. You can stay longer. You find new reserves of energy you didn't know you had. Four more breaths. One more breath cycle. Let's lower our hands down to the earth, onto the blocks or just the mat. Woo, back into our Uttanasana, our forward fold. Now notice if you, um, it doesn't feel comfortable to have your head below your heart. 
Keep your head lifted at heart height and support your hands on the blocks or a chair. It's totally fine. But if your head is hanging, or even if it's not, let's see if we can get some movement into the neck. So we're just letting the arms release after that holding. Shake your head yes. Shake your head no. <sighs> and breathe. Good. All right. And now that our hands are on the earth, or your blocks, let's lift up halfway and then exhale, squat down into a squat. You might have to kind of adjust your squat so that you can, you know, lift up, lift your chest up. And then exhale, or rather inhale as you extend the legs, exhale, squat down. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Ha! 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 And go down in your squat as far as feels comfortable for you. Usually a wider, you know, if you take a wider stance, you might be able to go a little deeper. You can explore the angle of the feet. Generally keep them going in the direction of the knees. Four more. Ha! 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 And then come back into our Uttanasana. Straighten your legs. Straighten your legs. Bring your feet hips distance apart if, the, if you widen them. And then bend the knees until the belly's on the thighs. Lift your chest, lift your arms, getting ready for Utkatasana, awkward chair pose. Good. Now, keep our arms at shoulder height for a moment so that we can adjust our stance. Make sure that you're shifting your weight back towards your heels, you're light on your toes. Draw the arm bones into the shoulder sockets. Maybe sink a little deeper. Good. So again, we're challenging our quads, our glutes, our hamstrings, getting a stretch in the calves. So add your pulsation if it makes it more manageable. So we can build our strength. And then maybe lift your arms to shoulder height, spinning your pinkies toward each other. And let's hold for a few rounds, coming into that circular breath. Inhaling up through the front of the body, exhaling down along the back of the body to the earth. Inhaling up through the feet, the thighs, the belly up to the crown of the head. Exhale along the back body, down the tailbone, along the back of the legs to the earth. Two more full breaths. Inhale and exhale, sink a little deeper. One more breath. Inhale and exhale, sink a little deeper. And then inhale, strong legs rise you all the way up. Arms overhead, extended mountain, and exhale, arms by your side. <sighs> Maybe bring a hand on the belly and a hand on the heart and notice how you're feeling now. Come back to your natural breath. So, let's do balance before standing poses today, just to mix things up a little bit. So, um, we'll start with crane. So if you want to have a chair to your side, we'll Pick up the right leg first, so you'd have a chair or a wall to the left side. Connect the left foot to the earth. You know, spread your toes wide so you have a nice stable base. Give a little tone to the belly. Lift the right leg up. Ideally, you know, knee to hip height, arms out to the side, bent elbows and wrists like wings of a crane. Balakikasana. Feel the grounding of the left leg and the lifting of the right. And then maybe explore the posture a little bit. See if you can pick that right hip up a little bit more than the left. Maybe lowering it down a little bit more than the left. Too. And then bring it right in the middle and settle in if you can. Inhale and exhale here. A couple more breaths. Inhale and exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Now release your hands onto the leg if you can. Maybe even only one hand on the knee if you have your hand on, you know, a, a, block, a support. Or both hands on the knee. And pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Okay. No, no, 
worry, you know, balance is challenging. We wobble. It's an evolution like life. We come in and out of it. Yeah, right? So give that a squeeze. Now you can stay here and sort of this like balancing up an asana. Or you can um, go to your tree pose like we did on Saturday. So see if you can take this, keep the leg high, externally rotate the hip, and let the foot just land in its tree pose. Notice where it went. You know, if you know you can go higher and you need the arm, that's okay. You need your hand to bring that foot up, that's all right. And then press, woo, press the lifted leg into the standing leg. Draw that knee of the lifted leg down. Feel grounded like a tree. Feel your roots connecting to the earth. Bring your, feel that belly tone length through the crown of the head. Hands on hips or at heart. Maybe send your arms to the sky if you like. And breathe here. Honoring the wobbles. And take one more breath as you bring your hands back to prayer. Pull that prayer back to your heart. And then you bring the leg back in again, lift it high, and then lower it down. And shake out the standing leg. All right, so now other side. Connect the right foot to the earth. Maybe spread the toes wide so you have a nice stable base. And as we ground through that right foot, we pick up that left leg from deep in the belly, from deep in the hara. Uh, lift the leg, arms out to the side with bent elbows and wrists, balakikasana. Grounding and lifting. Breathing here. Maybe exploring the hip again, seeing if you can isolate and lift that left hip a little higher. If you can bring it a little lower, Oops, how does that look? And then bring it maybe to hip height, or even higher. Lifting up through the belly, through the crown of the head. <sighs> Feeling the balance between the opposing forces, that, that um, grounding of apana and that lifting of prana, that uplifting. Take one more breath. And then release both hands, your one hand onto the knee. Pull that leg up if you can. Take a break if you need to, right? Just lowering the leg any time if you need to take a break. Grounding and lifting. Pausing here. Pull that knee in or that thigh into your chest. Can you pull it in? And then from here, keep the leg lifted, release the hands maybe to the hips so that we can try to go into our vrikshasana hands free. See how that works out for you this, on this side. I don't make any adjustments. Bent leg presses into standing leg. Bent knee draws down as the torso and the crown of the head lengthen. Hands could stay on hips or one on wall. Hands to prayer. You can send a prayer to the sky. And if you'd like to do another round of our circular breath, up through the right foot, through the front of the body, exhale from the crown of the head all the way down the back body to the earth. Inhale up through the front of the body to the crown of the head. Exhale down the back body to the earth. Taking one more breath here. And then let's slowly, on that next exhale, release your hands to your heart. Release the leg. And notice how you're feeling now. We you bring the shoulders up, back and down. 
Take a few clearing breaths, big inhale. Exhale it out with a sigh. Good. All right. So now let's go into our standing poses. We'll bring our hands onto our hips and step or hop out to a wide stance. Getting ready for triangle pose, trikonasana. Then turn your right toes out to the right at a 90 degree angle so the thigh rolls out. The left foot faces forward or turn slightly in so that this thigh rolls in. Both legs are active. Our hands are on our hips for starters. And let's take that right hand even a little bit lower so it presses on the hip crease. Tuck the hip in and then glide your torso forward kind of like we did in our warm-ups. Good. And breathe here. Nice work. Spin the heart open so your, your head is in line with your torso. And then release the right arm down to the sky. I'm sorry, right arm down to the earth and the left arm up to the sky. And then you can make some little circles with that arm, with that shoulder, to create space in the shoulder. As you're breathing here, go in the other direction, little movements in the shoulder. And then bend, bring that movement to a close, sorry. Bend the elbow, bring the hand behind the head, and then spin your heart open. Good, and then try one of those circular breaths. Up through the front of the body to the crown of the head. Exhale along the back body, down to the earth. One more, inhale, through the front of the body, to the crown of the head, exhale, down to the earth. Now extend that left arm, and if you want, you could take your right arm and reach towards that left leg, and the left arm overhead a diagonal. So feel you've got this diagonal, it's taking a lot of core strength to stay here. Spin your heart open to the sky. Can we hold this for a couple of breaths? Ah, right, inhale. And exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. And then use this left arm to lift you back up to standing. Woo! And arms to shoulder height. <laughs> Good job. All right. Now we'll do um, a little partial bind. So take, we'll do that one more time. Internally rotate the left arm. Bring it behind the back. Now it could just be gently behind the back, like in the mid-back. Maybe you can bring it all the way around. You can use your right hand to help you so that the hand's coming along the right side waist. Even when we go down, maybe your hand could catch that upper right thigh. Okay? So ground both legs, especially the back left leg. Lift your right arm, tuck your right hip under, reach forward, and then let that right arm rest wherever it wants to. It could be on the thigh, the shin, maybe it's just floating down towards the earth. Keep spinning your heart open. Long line of energy from the crown of your head to that back heel. Inhale, keep spinning the arm open, maybe reaching that arm back behind the back a little bit more. One more breath here, full breath through to the front of the body. Exhale out the back body to the earth. And then rather than coming up, let's bend the knee this time. So here we are getting ready for our, our um, side angle, Parjvokanasana. Maybe that hand could reach the thigh. Maybe not. It's okay. That arm could just reach down towards the earth. It could come onto a block. Of course, wait, let me back up. Of course, you could always be here, right? With the, the palm up to the sky. You have a little support then. Or you could go a little deeper. Those who want to challenge a little bit more, the hand could just rest, come onto the block. Some maybe even go a little deeper and see if you can go into your bind, right? If you take your bind, make sure it goes behind the knee, not the groin. All right, so wherever you are, that's perfect. Ground into the back leg. Take another breath or two here. Spinning the heart open. Breathing through the front body. Up to the crown of the head, exhale down along the back body. And then this next inhale, let's release our hands down to the earth, whether it's on the earth or your blocks. Pivot toward that right short side of your mat. Pivot on the ball of the back foot, you're in your lunge. Now, if I wasn't even this deep with my hands on the earth and my blocks, I might be here. You know, my hands might be on my thigh. It's okay. Wherever you are is perfect. Honor your body. All right, and then activate your legs, draw them together, forward to back, side to side. Lift your chest, lift your arms, send them back, diagonal warrior. Tone the belly. 
reaching back, airplane arms. So you're broad across the chest, palms facing the ground. And then inhale, send your arms to the sky, Virabhadrasana one. Take one or breath or two here, and then straighten your right leg, bring your hands to your hips, ground the back foot, pivot your feet to the front of your mat. Good job. Getting ready for a prasarita, our wide-legged forward fold. So we'll bring our arms out to the side. Um, adjust your feet so that your feet, toes are facing forward like your hips, or maybe turned in slightly. Up to you. Okay, like a slight turned in or parallel. Connect the outside edges of the feet to the earth so you're grounded. Feel that that makes your inner thighs engage. Lift from the pelvic floor, like the Hara region. Arms out like a T, and then let's hinge from our hips and go forward again, kind of like we did before in um, that Uttanasana part. So you're shifting your weight to the, fall, to the balls of the feet, to your toes. Your heels are still grounded, though. You're making a T with the body. You're lengthening from crown of head to tailbone. Arms are active. Take two more breaths. Inhale through the front body, up to the crown of the head. Exhale along the back body, down to the earth. One more. Inhale up to the crown of the head. Exhale along the back body, down to the earth. Next, inhale, let's rise all the way up. Not as long of a holding, right? You're like, thank goodness. Hands behind the back. Yoga mudra. So that's when we make the little fist with the body, uh, with the hand, sorry. And Bring it on the back body, you know, bend the elbows here, I'm gonna show. So you can always keep the elbows bent, so, to, you know, be safe with the shoulders, and draw the elbows and the shoulders together. So we're brought across the chest. Some of you are, if you're able to straighten the arms, you can straighten the arms and draw the fist away. So just do what is available to you, that's all, right? It's all we can do. Inhale, take a lift, take a little back bend. Lift your heart to the sky. And then exhale, let's go forward. Let's pause back at that first stage, that 90 degree stage. Keep broadening across the collarbones, drawing your shoulder blades together. Maybe bring the arms towards straighter, up to you. Stay here if this feels more, you know, where you wanna be. This feels like a great spot. You wanna go deeper, lower the crown of your head to the earth, maybe lift the fist off the back. And breathe here. Take two more breaths. So now I'm also moving toward Ujjayi breath. I may, you may have been already, but here with the head below the heart, it's a little maybe more challenging. My belly's a little compressed. Take one more breath and then release the hands to the earth. Oh, just feel that. Hands under the shoulders, maybe bend the knees side to side into a little side lunge. So we can just kind of move a little bit to release any tension. And then bring the legs towards straighter. Your hands could be on a chair, your blocks, the earth. Maybe you're gonna release them and grab onto your calves, your ankles, your outer toes, or your uh, the outside edges of your feet, rather, or your big toes, and then go deeper into your forward fold. So when we catch the feet, that's when this pose is called Prasarita Padottanasana. So hands are, are, we're touching our feet, padas, our feet. So um, see if you can then shift your weight towards the balls of your feet so you're long through the spine and you're folding yourself in half. But you're shifting your weight slightly forward, slightly forward. Take one more breath and then release your hands back underneath your shoulders. Let's heel toe our feet together. Heel toe our feet together. Or hips distance apart. We're going to bend our knees, lift our chest, bring our arms forward. Getting ready back into our Utkatasana. Good. Lift your arms to a little higher than shoulder height at a 45 degree angle. And then with your strong legs, let's rise all the way up to standing and lower our arms by our side. before we go to the other side. So hands back on the hips. And then when you're ready, step or help out. 
Correct. Turn the left toes out at a 90 degree angle. Right foot in or, or at 90 degrees up or perpendicular. And then let the left hand just glide down to the hip crease. Hips and torso are facing forward, the long side of your mat. Tuck that left hip under. You can even you know, give it a gentle press with the left hand. Get long in your torso. Good. Spin your heart open to the sky. You know, keep your torso in line with your legs, your head or your neck in line with your spine. You can release that left arm down and send the right arm up to the sky. So activate the core to support you. And let's add a little movement to the shoulder so you can maybe do some little circles up here, like, like you're drawing circles on the ceiling. I'm gonna go in the other direction. And then bend, bring that movement to stillness, bend the elbow, bring it behind the head. Spin your heart open. Good, and breathe. Nice. Inhaling from your right foot up the front body to the crown of the head. Exhale, down the back body all the way to the earth. One more, inhale up the front body to the crown of the head. Exhale, down the back body to the earth. Now, you know, keep your torso where it is. Extend that right arm again. Maybe reach that left arm towards your right leg and the right arm overhead. Spin your heart open a little bit more. Feel this is a little more demanding on the core. Really reach and breathe, spinning your heart open. Inhale and exhale. One more breath. Inhale and exhale. This next inhale, let's rise ourselves up. Woo. Arms to shoulder height. And then internally, now we're taking that right arm, bring it behind the back at whatever kind of internal rotation, whatever degree of bind feels comfortable for you. Maybe bringing that hand along the back body. Good. Okay, so one more time, we'll do our triangle pose. Make some adjustments if you need to. I just had to adjust a little. Tuck that left hip under, go forward of the torso. Good. Left arm down to the earth. Spin your heart open. A few more circular breaths. In through the front body, up to the crown of the head. Exhale along the back body, down to the earth. Keep spinning your heart open, up to the crown of the head. Exhale along the back body, down to the earth. One more. Inhale. And exhale. And then stay here. Bend your knee and go right into your Parjvokanasana, your side angle. So maybe you uh, bring that forearm onto the thigh. And you're even higher, right? You can even be higher. But keep that shoulder relaxed. Don't let it drop to your ear if you are doing this, right? Even if you're here, just don't let that shoulder creep up. Keep it down so your neck is long. Spin the heart open. Maybe extend the arm. Maybe find a block. Maybe take your bind. If you do take your bind, make sure again you go onto the behind the knee, and then once you get it, you try to open up the torso. Right? Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Good job. One more breath. And then slowly unwind the right arm down to the earth. Both hands frame our left foot, pivot on the ball of the right foot, so we're in a low lunge. Right. Activate your legs. You know, make adjustments. Maybe you're up high. Maybe that feels better for you to be high than down low. So, you know, find a comfortable seat in the posture. Lift your chest, get a little space between belly and thigh. Send your arms back behind you, palms facing down to the earth. Diagonal warrior, good. One more breath here. Inhale, our arms sweep all the way up to the sky. Virabhadrasana one. Take one more breath. Let your arms lift you up straight in the front leg. Pivot your torso to the front or the long side of your mat. Arms by your sides. Feet parallel or turning in. Prasarita one more time. Arms. Could be on the hips, out to the sides, back behind the back for yoga mudra. Inhale, lift your heart. Let's take an extension here. Keep your belly toned, lift your heart to the sky. Exhale, hinge from your hips. Pause when your torso is parallel to your hips or go all the way down to the earth, maybe fingers to the sky. Oh, good. And explore whether.
whether you keep your the heels of your hands apart or together. And notice when you do that how it feels in your neck, in your shoulders. That's where I think you'll notice what variation feels better for you. I strive to keep my palms together. I think it helps my shoulder blades move together better and feels my neck can be longer. So explore that in your body. One more breath, go a little deeper. And then release your hands to the earth. Uh, maybe lift up halfway, get long. Exhale, go deeper into your forward fold. Use the blocks underneath each arm if that feels more comfortable. Let your hands walk behind the legs or take a foothold. Up to you. Those who like to go upside down here in your tripod headstand, feel free if that's in your practice. We'll take a few more breaths here. Inhale and exhale. Again, remember to keep the weight shifting towards the balls of your feet. Keep lifting the hips to the sky, toning the belly, and hinging. Take one more breath here. And then let's lift ourselves up halfway. Bring your hands under your shoulders, and then heel toe your feet in. Heel toe them in until they're about hips distance apart or a little wider. We're gonna come down through a squat to get down onto our mat. So let's bend our knees, lower the hips, lift your chest. Now this might be your squat, it might be really high. So then you can maybe lower one leg or the other leg and come down. If for those who can go a little deeper, you can draw your tailbone to the earth and bring your arms between your legs and lift your chest and find your malasana squat. And then whenever you're ready, this, this is a little challenging, drawing the tail down, bringing your torso between your legs, pressing the palms away so you're brought across your collarbones, lifting your heart. And then when you're ready, you can release the hands behind you so you can come to seated. <sighs> and keep your knees bent. So let's all meet here. Let's just do one little round of a boat pose before we come onto our back. So, I'm going to turn sideways here. So, Navasana is, you know, one of the core exercises in yoga. So, find, hold on to the hamstrings for starters. I'm just doing a short set. Feel your you know, six bones connected to the earth, even if you have to, you know, move some of the flesh away so you can really feel good, good and connected. Tone your belly, lift your heart. Good. Lean back a little bit so you feel the low belly working. I feel my low belly working even though I've kind of got a little bit of a hold on my legs. I can start to, um, you know, deepen this um, by lifting my heels for starters, and that might be where you want to stay. You keep lifting your heart to the sky. Keep your head in line with your spine, just like we endeavor to do in our triangle pose. And then if you want, you can lift one leg. You can lift the other leg until your, your calves are parallel to the earth. You can bring your legs towards straighter, but wherever you are, keep lifting the heart so you don't um, round the spine, you don't lean back. So see what you can do, adjust the leg position. And then finally, if you want, you could extend your arms. And let's take three breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And then when you're ready, we'll like slowly lower all the way down onto our back, however you want to get there. <sighs> Nice. All right. So make some adjustments on your mat so that you know you're fully on your mat. Find any propping if you need. We'll just take a little a short shavasana before we finish up with one pranayama. So we'll just rest here for a short bit. <sighs> So take a few 
Dirga breaths, a few circular breaths. Inhaling and exhaling it out. If you want, you can inhale through the mouth. I'm sorry, inhale through the nose and exhale out through the mouth with a sigh. You can bring your arms by the sides, palms up, shoulder blades moving together under the back. Inhale and exhale it out. Notice how you're feeling now. Notice the flow of your breath. Are you able to breathe deeper? Noticing the flow of prana through the body. Did some of our exercises help us generate a little more energy for the body? Notice the mind, is our mind more clear and spacious? So taking a few more breath cycles here. to integrate our practice and restore our vital energy. So allow your breath to deepen. Bring movement to fingers and toes. Maybe add some gentle rotations to your wrists and ankles. Oh, take a yawn, wiggle your jaw. Release your arms overhead as you extend through your fingers and down through your toes, taking a big stretch. And then you can sweep your arms by your sides and give your legs a squeeze. And then with bent or straight legs, roll over onto your right side. And just rest there for a moment. And what I like to think of this fetal position our first yoga pose. So we've been doing yoga forever. I'm sending some healing thoughts to yourself, extending them out to others. Meta loving kindness.
and then in your own time, using the right elbow and left hand to sit up to come up to seated and like we started so maybe finding a cushion or up on a block and we'll finish with one more pranayama Okay, so let's use our right hand. We'll do alternate nostril breathing that will kind of evolve into Analoma Valoma, and that's the same breath, but with a holding, like we did on Saturday. So, um, so, so Vishnu Mudra is when you take your uh, pointer fingers or your peace fingers and fold them into the palm so that you have the thumb and the ring finger to use to block the thumb and the um, sorry, the right nostril and the left nostril. So right, the thumb blocks the right, ring finger blocks the left. Take care not to press on the nose too hard when you're doing this. It just is a gentle closing, right? Just super gentle, easy with the nose. If it doesn't feel comfortable to fold the fingers in, you can always have the hand on your head. And if the arm ever gets tired, you can always support it with your left hand, so that's okay. So for starters, let's, um, Gently close the right nostril with the thumb. Inhale through the left. Close the left nostril with the ring finger. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Now slow it down. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left, inhale left. Close left, exhale right, inhale right. Close right. Exhale left, inhale left, and continue like that on your own. As this breath calms the mind, because your monkey mind has to really focus on this breathing, right? So it's, it helps to calm the mind. It balances the left and right hemispheres of the brain. I think it's very soothing. Don't worry if you kind of get so into it, you lose, <laughs> you lose uh, what you're doing. Just start again, begin again, always. Now the next time we inhale through the left, keep both nostrils blocked and hold for a period of time. When the need to exhale arises or becomes, you know, a need, exhale through the right, inhale through the right, block the right and hold in. Exhale left, inhale left. Lock the left, hold in. This is called an internal kumbak, this breath retention. And then when you need to, exhale right, inhale right, and hold. And continue like that with this, these holdings. So this is called Analoma Viloma. As I mentioned on Saturday, this is the pranayama practice of Swami Kripalu, the guru in the Kripalu tradition. Notice how you feel during those breath retentions. Notice how it feels when you release. 
But in the breath retention, all there is is yourself and truth. So it might be an opportunity for a different, different awareness. So take one more round of Analoma Veloma. And then the next time you are ready to exhale out of your left nostril, release the hand to your lap, exhale out of both nostrils, close your eyes and return to your natural breath. or maybe your fuller three-part yogic breath, your dirga, your circular breath. Noticing the effects of our asana and pranayama practice today. Notice how your breath feels now. Notice how your body feels. Notice the mind. Let's draw our hands to heart center in Anjali Mudra and drop our head into our heart. Take a few breaths here, honoring the teachings of yoga your commitment to practice today. And then as we lift our gaze, we'll seal our practice by joining our voices in the sound of Om. Inhale. Ah. Namaste. 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 Thank you once again. Thank you very much.